Hello my friends, this is Dr. Diana's patient and I am pretty ill. Today will be fun. I'm going to run through a layman's version of section two of the Driscoll theory, mast cell involvement in Ehlers-Danlos. I was going to say some of the updates for part two of the written theory, but I just can't. I must share a couple of things with you today. They're going to change our world and amazingly and humbly, I think, give more credence to the Driscoll theory. So before I jump in though, I wanted to reach out to our other family members, those of us with chronic Lyme disease, chronic fatigue, fibromyalgia, multiple sclerosis, much of this may affect you too. So heads up everyone. Now you may remember in section one, we covered external communicating hydrocephalus, our propensity for this condition from birth and how it can lead to autonomic dysfunction, endocrinology gone wild, and cranial nerve symptoms. Today, let's look at our propensity to have mast cell activation disorder or MCAD as we call it, or mastocytosis. Mast cells are like allergy cells from hell, if you will. Normal ones look kind of pretty. Here's one. And they can release substances that can actually help us heal, but they must be kept in check because when they burst or degranulate, they release some pretty powerful chemicals and hormones, cytokines. Some are pro-inflammatory, some are anti-inflammatory chemokines, histamine, heparin, prostaglandins, proteases, and acid hydrolases, for example. Now in MCAT or mastocytosis, our mast cells are not normal or pretty. They're kind of funky shaped. Here's a few. They multiply too fast, they live too long, and they can hide in our organs and tissues all over the place, including the skin. We can get rashes, weird blisters, flushing, etc. The GI tract, IBS anyone? The liver, they can change our liver enzymes, cause cysts on the liver and even enlargement of the liver. Kidneys, spine, brain, and in the brain they can cause brain fog or dementia, extreme fatigue, bipolar presentation, suicide ideation, I have been there, my friends, and it is not pretty. Now, this is the big one for you today. Mast cells love to hide out in the choroid plexus. Now, guys, that is where we produce our CSF, cerebral spinal fluid. So, if they get triggered there, we may have a sudden increase in CSF. And if we're already having trouble draining fluid, covered in section one, the increase in fluid and therefore pressure on the brain is likely enough to push the brain down just a little bit, fill up the cisterns around the brainstem, and cause an episode. Now, if you've seen my video, emergency five months angioplasty or post angioplasty, I was having one of those episodes. CSF was constantly coming out of my nose. I had all of the hyperadrenergic pot symptoms and even, get this, my MS friends, some symptoms of multiple sclerosis. I again had a toddler hanging onto my right leg and my right arm. My hands were numb and can we talk exhaustion and brain fog, heavens. Now, we're limited in time here, but quickly. Mast cells release histamine, which causes vaso vasodilation. Prostaglandins can cause pain. Basically, we can have pot symptoms from just the mast cells themselves, not just because of the increase in CSF production they can cause. The big news that we've been waiting for, the new protocol for diagnosing MCAT is out. And I'm attaching it here on the website. So many of us had symptoms of mast cell disease, tons of us, but normal tryptase, methylhistamine, and bone marrow biopsies. Basically with the new protocol, if it looks like a duck and it quacks like a duck, it's a duck. So if we have symptoms and we respond to medication, we have MCAD. We all knew this, but until this paper was published, we didn't have a good way to explain it to our doctors. So I'm attaching it on my website, Mast Cell Activation Disease, a concise practical guide for diagnostic workup and therapeutic options. Yay! So there you have it. I hope it helps everyone to hear the layman's version. Next time, section three, CCSVI and what it means for us. My friends, we are getting treatment options that are working. Certainly mast cell treatment, acetazolamide or neptazane if we have slightly high intracranial pressure and angioplasty for CCSVI. Until we can change our genes, let's do what we can do to duct tape a life together, shall we? And let's do it together. This is not a journey to travel alone for sure. Until next time, let's change our world one brain cell at a time if we have to. Gentle hacks to you all.